Hey, Doug, I'm still here for Doc Sports, and I'm back to talk some golf. That's right. We're talking some golf and getting some stuff done. Yesterday, or last week, had a winning week, thanks to Billy Horschel. This was a rare one for me. Billy Horschel making a, a um, birdie on 18. Okay. Put me over the top for, for the, with his finish. So we had a winning week. Uh, had, or had another winning week on the PGA Tour. So I'm back to talk about the Arnold Palmer Invitational this week. Uh, I had I have not played the course, but I've been on the grounds, walked a few of the holes with uh, with a member and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Years ago, okay, it wasn't any time recently, but uh, very uh, very difficult golf course, and it's amazing to me, to be perfectly honest, uh, that the PG. I mean, there, a lot of people uh, are playing because of Arnold Palmer, okay, to honor him, especially the older players that have got that got to meet him and such uh, previously and understand his legend and what and what he meant to the game of golf and all that other stuff. So, so it's a, but it's a great golf course. It's a hard golf course, and these guys are playing two hard golf courses in a row. Holy cow! Oh, the humanity for these PGA professionals from that standpoint. Anyways, um, so, so, but it, like I said, it's, it's a great golf course. Uh, in terms of, of it, you know, what makes it, what makes it a great golf course? Well, it's, it's a par 72, a little over 7,400 yards. Uh, half the holes have water on them. And so that in, in many cases, the way they're set up and along with, uh, there's over a hundred uh, bunkers on, on the golf course. So it discourages guys from hitting a lot of drivers in terms of how the course is generally set up. And so with that, you have, you hit a shorter club off the tee, but that means you're going to have to hit a longer iron afterwards. And then the way the course is set up, the greens are, are firm. So that means you have to be accurate. Otherwise the ball's out there bouncing around. And if you remember last week, I mentioned at PGA National that this was the uh, that PGA National last week the uh, the Honda Classic was had the most bogeys or double bogeys okay excuse me most double bogeys surrendered last year well Bay Hills in the top ten so again it's it's another place you really have to play pretty um, I guess the right term or the maybe maybe it's not the right term you have to play boring golf here Tiger Woods won here eight times and what he did is he owned the par fives. Okay, so that was his big thing. But otherwise, he just went around trying to get pars. Okay, and and if he got close on some on some pins, made some putts, that's what he did, and that's what you have to do here because there is trouble lurking throughout this entire golf course. It makes it very difficult. The greens are fast, and then the wind is also supposed to be up on Friday through Sunday. At least that's what the, that's what the longer range forecast was for the weekend. So we'll see what that that does, and that will also play a part. Okay, as to what 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 occurs because that can dry out the greens, make them fast, and they're pretty slopey. The greens are so you got a lot of uh, undulation happening uh, on the golf course. makes it makes it more difficult from that standpoint. So, but we got a very good field yet again. Um, again, many many of the top players uh, in in the world, and in this case, you have to you have to do some you have to though play a certain way. Like I said, in order to succeed here, and guys that are you know too aggressive, they can get into trouble. Now John Rahm is the favorite, and I got to tell you, there's zero buzz about John Rahm in terms of betting for betting purposes on this one. Uh, he's he's played five tournaments. He's finished 21st or or lower. Okay, so he so he's been good. Okay, from that standpoint, but he hasn't been great. Okay, he's had three top, top top ten finishes too, but he's been favored almost in every single tournament that he's teed it up in, and hasn't gotten, let's just say, expected results. So he's not much of a play this week, and I have to say that given his odds as the favorite, I would probably not probably I would recommend betting against him this week. Um, I would say the same thing is also true of M uh, last week, who was the favorite to win the Honda, didn't even make the cut. So you can make the case for him that he's got uh, five top 20 finishes and eight starts, but he's also missed the cut in two of his last five. So he's another guy that, at least from a, from a betting standpoint, I'd probably look to go away from. Victor Hovland has Hovland, excuse me, has has been great. Other than how he played at in Scottsdale, and his last outing, he had a, a pair of sixty fives in at L A. in the middle rounds. He, so he's played well, and he's first in birdie average. So he's somebody you know to take a look at. Uh, uh, Roy McIlroy definitely is going to attract a lot of attention, and justifiably so. In his last five starts at Bay Hill, he's finished fourth, first. Sixth, fifth, 
and 10th. Okay. So he's a player I would definitely look out for, okay, for this for this upcoming week. Uh, Will Zalatoris is another popular choice. He has the long iron game, certainly, to to do well here. He uh, he's um Let's see here. He, well, he's he's part of a group, and this makes him an interesting uh, thing, an interesting play potentially this week. Is that in four of the last five tournaments? In case of following along in the PGA Tour, four of the last five first-time winners. Okay, Zalatoris has the game to do it. Question is, does his putter hold up? So that that's really the the big thing. Um, um, Matsuyama is another stellar long iron player, uh, and he from he can score well on the par fives. But like Zalatoris, his situation depends on the putter. So he could finish in the top three or he could finish 30th. It just depends on, on how he putts on a particular day. I'm not big on Adam Scott or uh, Paul Casey this week. I, they're, they're really good ball strikers and they're accurate uh, off the tee. But neither has really been dialed in so far this season. So I'm not, you know, and until I see their A game, maybe it pops up this week. I don't know. But I can't say that I'm really excited, you know, to, with the, with what they have to offer in this one. Scotty Scheffler, he's going to, he's another interesting one this week. The thing that I look at him, he won in Scottsdale or uh, picked up, and that was his first victory. And he didn't let down. A lot of times when guys win, you know, all the euphoria and everything that goes along with then the following week, they either they don't, they don't show up, and a lot of guys don't even play the following week, week after a win. Uh, but he finished tight seventh. And he's played well. Uh, he, actually, he's not played well in Florida very often. And his best finish at Bay Hills tied 15th. Iffy. Okay. Maybe a top, I'd, I'd say consider him, depending on how you go about what you do, I'd consider him for a top 15. Um, and from there, uh, Leishman and Hatton are both past champions. They could rise up. I'm just not sure that they will this week. I'm, I'm not seeing anything that leads me to believe that they're really good wagers from that standpoint. So what, what's it going to take to win here? Well, you have to be able to hit, be accurate off the tee at Bay Hill. You have to be able to hit long irons. You have to be able to judge the distance to try and get close to pins. Now, with the wind up, that means you probably won't be able to hit the ball as high. And if you if you hit the ball too high, the wind can get it, and or you can if you're off target some, it can be bouncing around off the back of the green. You might find some water on certain holes. It's just it's not easy. It's, like I said, it's a, it's a difficult golf course, so you have to be able to control your iron shots, and then you have to be able to read putts because so the greens the greens are fast, and they're slopey. So you have to be able to read putts and. Get as close as possibly can, and just you know, with with putting, it just it's just how things come out, you know, how they work for certain days and how things go. So, in terms of potential plays, I think you have to look, for example, at McElroy top five, uh, based on, based on his history, and I would say some good head to head matchups if you can get them at minus one thirty or less. I would think that would that wouldn't be bad. Um, it, other head to heads, I. Consider if you can find uh, Zelatoris over, over Casey. I did happen to see that one. That that's out there, and I also like uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick over Mark Leishman. Okay, in, in head to heads there, a, a top twenty. That's uh, I, I can't say let's say it's a long shot, but it, it's it's a it's I think it's a nice value play. Is James Kokrick? He's finished uh, tied for tenth. 18th and 8th in his last three times has been the Bay Hill. So I think he's got the potential to cash nicely as well. So there's your report complete for the Bay Hill. Uh, I, I have this for myself this week. I have a six unit play plus four others, and you can pick them all up at Docs for just $30. Okay, for, for golf action this upcoming weekend. And that play will be good from the time that, that you watch this video until 7 10 a.m. Thursday. So you have that window of opportunity to pick up those golf selections in that window. So there you have it. This is Doug Upstone for Doc Sports. I'll be back on Thursday for more free play action. And I'll be back again next Wednesday with more golf action. Until then, this is Doug Upstone for Doc Sports. I'm out.